Muscle tissue is specialized for contraction. Muscle cells contract due to interaction between filaments of the proteins myosin and actin. These two proteins are found in the cytoskeletons of many cells, but in muscle cells, the filaments are more numerous and arranged so that their interaction produces a contraction of the entire cell. There are three types of muscle tissue in the body, skeletal, cardiac, and smooth muscle tissues. The contraction process is the same in all of them, but the organization of their actin and myosin filaments differs. In module 4.6, we present a brief cursory overview of muscle tissue. In module 7, we devote substantial time to examining in detail both the anatomy and physiology of muscle tissue. Here, we'll focus on general characteristics rather than specific details, which we will examine in module 7. Let's consider the general characteristics of the three muscle tissues of the human body now. First, let's discuss skeletal muscle tissue. Skeletal muscle tissue cells, or myocytes, are large. A skeletal muscle cell may be at 100 micrometers in diameter and up to 30 to 60 centimeters long that is one to two feet long. The reason they can be so large is that they actually form during development by the fusion of multiple myocytes. And it is for this reason they contain multiple nuclei and are described as multinucleated cells. In fact, the individual muscle cells are usually called muscle fibers or myofibers because they are relatively long and slender. Mature skeletal muscle fibers are incapable of dividing but new muscle fibers can be produced through the division of myosatellite stem cells in adult skeletal muscle tissue. As a result, skeletal muscle tissue retains the ability to at least partially repair itself if an injury occurs. As mentioned earlier, numerous proteins play critical roles in contraction of muscle cells. Most notable are the thick motor protein fibers made of myosin proteins and the relatively thin protein filaments made of actin protein. In skeletal muscle fibers, actin and myosin filaments are organized into repeating and overlapping patterns that give the cells a striated or banded appearance. The striations or bands are easy to see in light micrographs. Finally, skeletal muscle fibers will not usually contract unless stimulated by nerves. Because the nervous system allows us to consciously and voluntarily control skeletal muscle activity, Skeletal muscle tissue is described as striated, voluntary muscle. The heart contains an abundance of muscle tissue called cardiac muscle tissue. Similar to skeletal muscle tissue, the arrangement of myosin and actin filaments gives the cardiac muscle tissue a striated appearance. Cardiac muscle cells, or cardiocytes, are much smaller than skeletal muscle fibers and usually have only a single nucleus. Cardiac muscle cells are more highly branched than skeletal muscle fibers and form extensive connections with one another. Cardiocytes are interconnected with one another at special regions called intercalated discs. These are special attachment sites containing gap junctions and desmosomes. The gap junctions allow for rapid communication between cardiocytes and the desmosomes provide strong physical connections that allow the tissue to contract as a single unit. Cardiac muscle cells, therefore, form a network that efficiently conducts a stimulus and force for contraction from one area of the heart to another. Cardiac muscle tissue does not possess the stem cells found in skeletal muscle tissue and therefore does not have the ability to repair itself. Some cardiac muscle cells do divide after an injury to the heart, but the repairs are only partial. While there is extensive innervation of the heart, cardiac muscle cells do not rely on nerve activity to initiate contractions. Instead, Specialized pacemaker cells establish a regular rate of contraction. The nervous system can alter the rate of pacemaker activity, but it does not provide voluntary control over individual cardiocytes. Therefore, we call cardiac muscle tissue striated, involuntary muscle. Smooth muscle tissue is found throughout the body. We find smooth muscle tissue lining hollow organs, for example, the urinary bladder, and in the walls of veins and arteries. We also find smooth muscle tissue in layers around the respiratory, circulatory, digestive, and reproductive tracts. 
Smooth muscle cells are small, slender, and spindle-shaped. Smooth muscle cells typically contain only one nucleus. While smooth muscle cells depend on actin and myosin for contractions, these protein filaments are not arranged in the same overlapping and parallel arrangements as seen in skeletal and cardiac muscle tissue. Therefore, no distinct banding or striation pattern is observed. Smooth muscle cells can divide, so smooth muscle tissue can regenerate after injury. Smooth muscle cells may contract on their own, or their contractions may be influenced by neural activity. However, the branch of the nervous system that regulates smooth muscle tissue is not under conscious control. Therefore, the nervous system usually does not provide voluntary control over smooth muscle contractions. So smooth muscle is known as non-striated, involuntary muscle. In summary, the human body has three types of muscle tissue, skeletal, cardiac, and smooth muscle tissues. The cells of muscle tissue range from long, multinucleated fibers of skeletal myofibers to the short, tapered cells of smooth muscle tissue. For all muscle tissue types, actin and myosin protein fibers play a central role in contraction events. The arrangement of these protein fibers gives skeletal and cardiac muscle tissue a striated appearance, which is not observed in smooth muscle tissue. All muscle tissue has limited repair ability. However, cardiac muscle tissue is the most restricted in this regard. Finally, only skeletal muscle tissue is under conscious and voluntary control, with cardiac and smooth muscle tissue being categorized as involuntary muscle tissue. Join us next in Module 4.7 as we continue our overview of the four tissue types of the human body. There we'll look at the general characteristics of neural tissue.